Welcome to Beyond Bosch. I'm your host, Jessica Dahl. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and leave a review if you like this episode. I'm super excited to chat with Samantha. She goes by Sam Ducher. Uh, She is a data scientist at Bosch's manufacturing plant in Anderson, South Carolina. She's a self-proclaimed data nerd and brings a unique perspective to reduce cost and improve efficiency. So welcome to the show, Sam. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Jessica. I'm excited to do this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Absolutely. So, I mean, that was such a brief kind of intro for you. I'd love for you to share a little bit more so our listeners know who they're, who they're listening to, who you are, what makes you tick, and what you do. Yeah, maybe they actually want to hear it from me to say I am a data nerd. <laughs> and I'm perfectly right. fine with it, right? <laughs> Uh, No, uh, my whole thing as a data scientist in manufacturing is really how can we push data driven solutions to reach manufacturing excellence? And what does that mean, right? We want to improve our quality. We want to be as lean as possible. We want to be as efficient as possible. We want to increase our productivity. Um, Really, at the end of the day, I I do want to reduce scraps. So how can we deliver data-driven solutions, whether that's a root cause analysis tool, whether that's a simple dashboard, whether that's artificial intelligence, right? Um, it, it really, it, it there's realms and realms of, of possibilities here at Bosch is when we say data-driven solution. But uh, yeah, that that's the whole gist of being a data scientist here, of how can we, we improve our process and, and really reduce the cost for um, people that, that buy our products as well. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of what led you to this? I mean, how do you become a data scientist? Like what was your journey to get here? Right. So my background uh, was in pure mathematics. Uh, and I've come to quickly realize uh, when I was doing pure mathematics that I wanted to be more useful, right? Uh, and then I got into more computer science, right? And I always had that statistics background. Um, and so I think it kind of just evolved on me uh, enhancing my skill sets from just math and then diving into computer science and then statistics. But in the end of the day, um, it's it's I get to teach, right? The people that I work with, I, I get to really say, you know, this is how I'm using your data that helps you. The WIFM approach, right? What's in it for me? People love that, right? And if I can say, here's what your data means, here's how it can improve your process. I think that that's what excites me, right, in, in this position as a data scientist, that I can teach about um, their their data, and not only that, I can learn from them as well, because uh, I tell you, the engineers here, um, they definitely teach <laughs> a lot. Uh, I have to learn a lot from them as far as just, you know, how they manufacture these complex products we have here, just in Anderson, right? Um, just multi-layer processes, um, just the complexity of going from pace to an end of line product. It's, it's, it's crazy, right? Yeah, absolutely. So have you always kind of been into mathematics? You went into mathematics. Like I would imagine, do you love it? Uh, Were you kind of like encouraged to go that route? Like what, what led you down that path? Right. Um, I definitely think my parents had a strong influence, right? Uh, They definitely stressed school. Um, But I also think that starting off, uh, I I wasn't, you know, the best at mathematics, right? I remember a story. I was just talking to my parents the other day. I remember a story of like uh, being in third grade and trying to like I'm a competitive person, right? And I wanted to win this uh, multiplication contest where I could do all my multiplication tables and like beat everyone in the class. And I remember my parents like sitting down with me and just like having me learn this, right? And because I, I wasn't good at it before and then I was competitive and I and I just wanted to again, get better at it. And maybe, maybe that's where it started off third grade. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think, you know, it just kind of involved, right? It, I just wanted right. to- keep getting better at it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. All the way from third grade. And I love that you like weren't <laughs> naturally great at it. Right. But, um, that kind of is like being competitive that kind of drives you to get better. Right. So I love like, that. That's awesome. So I know you I, I heard that you previously worked um, kind of a big deal at the, the world renowned Oak Ridge Laboratory, the National Laboratory. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I have 
only great things to say about Oak Ridge National Laboratory, right? The people, you know, working there are geniuses, right? And I still contact, uh, or I'm still in contact with a bunch of them there. It was a an awesome opportunity is of really, you know, taking it and expanding on my skill sets. I uh, worked for our little geography group and um, I used a lot of, you know, mathematical models to kind of estimate population densities uh, all around the world. Um, and so, yeah, Oak Ridge, um, it really kind of also took my mathematical sets, uh, skill sets and then transitioned them into more coding based too of R or Python. Um, so Oak Ridge, yeah, it, it's a great uh, opportunity. <laughs> I loved it working there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. So, okay, so back to like the data piece of your story and kind of what you're doing today and, and how it fits in the bigger picture and those listening, like why does data even matter? You hear this like data, data-driven, you know, decisions, all these, you know, everyone's just talking about it. Um, and I don't think that's news, but what's the point? Like, why is it so important in, in today's day and age, the digital age, if you will? Right. So it's all about this industrial revolution, right? Industry 4.0. And yeah, that's all about connectivity. And why data is important is because uh, it's only getting bigger and bigger, right? Technology is only getting smarter and smarter. No one, not everyone has to be a data scientist, but we should all know how to read data. We should all know how to understand data and feel comfortable with it, right? It's how, how we're going to survive in this industrial revolution, right? So it is beyond important for us to keep pushing for more data, for us to keep pushing for better understanding of the data so we can all make informed decisions, right? Uh, the more informed data-driven decisions that are out there, uh, the better. Right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And so, I mean, with that in mind, what gets you the most excited? Kind of, what are you proud of? What are you excited? Maybe something you're working on? What just kind of lights you up about that? Right. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I, I loved working at Oak Ridge, um, but at Bosch, uh, I would really say uh, maybe the it's a mindset change or a difference is like when I when I go into the plant and I'm walking down the hall and I have that engineer or I have that other manager or I even have someone from plant leadership stops me and says, hey, we just had a problem out on the floor and we just used your tool and it it literally solved our problem. That's cool, right? That's, that's that awesome. human, yeah, that one on one interaction where I'm stopped in the hallway and they said, hey, your data driven approach helped us today. Not only that is if I go out on the line, right, and I look out on a little HMI human machine interface and I see that my algorithm is being used to help run that line more efficiently and I physically see it, right? That's where I think gets me going. That's the exciting part of it. It's like, wow. Not only did I reduce that amount of time for, for the operators, for the engineers, um, I also, um, you know, helped uh, improve uh, scrap. Yeah, absolutely. That, that has to feel really rewarding. And I, I mean, not everybody gets that experience, right? To actually see what you're building and creating to be used by other people and make their lives better. I mean, and in turn, right, like that helps the end user when you're making this, this side of the fence you know, more efficient and cost effective, right? Right. Awesome. So are you like one of those people who maybe like in everyday life you're walking or you're at the grocery store or hiking or something, and you're like seeing things that could be improved. Is that how your mind works? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, yeah, why not? Because I, I, I think just there's so much stuff that I don't even know, right? Uh, where it's like, man, if only we did something like this, that could improve every the efficiency of any type of process. I mean, yeah. improving a process, uh, that's, you can walk away at the end of the day and say, hey, I made a difference, right? That's, yeah. that's the rewarding aspect of it. That's awesome. I love that. So I do want to ask, I, I love to ask everyone who comes on the show, like, what is the best piece of advice that either someone's given you or you want to leave with those listening today? It can be career or personal, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, and my answer is always at I hate to say that it's cliche because a lot of people give this answer, but I feel very passionate about it. <laughs> so hear me out. It's, it's it's always keep learning, right? It's 
in the in the realm of data science, like I said, technology is getting smarter and smarter, right? Data is getting bigger and bigger. The way that I wrote a machine learning algorithm uh, five years ago has probably dramatically changed just within those five years. We're on an exponential curve here of change when it comes to digitalization. And so you just constantly have to keep learning right and it's not even just from the data aspect or or just from the coding aspect it's you have to keep constantly learning people as well right as a data scientist it's not me by myself solving the, the world's problems i constantly have to build a connection with the domain experts with whether they're the engineers um, whether they're you know operators whether it is management everyone thinks differently they always want to know you know uh, how can this help them and and learning people too is something that you should always get better at so from just always keep learning <laughs> That's so good. I think the the point you just made at the end too of the the people aspect because I think a lot of times, you know, um, we can focus on especially if you're really gifted and talented in things like you know, data scientist and mathematics. Like you can get really involved in the tech side of it and like the the one on one interaction. But like that human element is so important. So that should encourage people listening that yes, you do still need to have like work on your emotional intelligence, work on your people skills. Even if you aren't a people person, you still need that, right? To some degree. Yeah, and I think I even tell, you know, other data scientists that I'm like, you know, guys, you might be smarter than me and, and a lot of you guys are, but if you can't articulate what you're doing with their data to someone else that isn't a, a, a data nerd, then that's always gonna be a, a pitfall for you, right? Yeah. You need to be able to communicate to other people and really sell what you're doing in terms of, of data science. Yeah, that's awesome. What do you think set you apart with that? Like, is that just kind of your personality or did you have somebody kind of encourage you in that as well? Like really focusing on that connection? Right. Um, I, I feel like maybe it is just my, my personality as far as being outgoing. Um, but I, I realized really quickly too, uh, if I like came in, you know, here in the Anderson plant and I'm like, hey, I'm going to build this artificial intelligence model and I'm going to do this, this and this. I realized like their eyes would just kind of <laughs> gloss over. I want to get the help that I, I truly need. Right. Uh, yeah. And so uh, since I, I, I am very, you know, result oriented um and i and i want to solve certain problems i, I realized that i i need help from others and and i think it's just clicked of like i need to learn how to talk to other people right <laughs> i can't wow. talk to just data scientists right <laughs> absolutely oh that's awesome that's very encouraging um so i guess that's kind of it i i want to keep this short and sweet because i want people to be able to digest what you've just talked about I'd love to maybe have you on another time and we can deep dive into different topics. Is there anything that you want to leave the audience with or um, anything that you didn't have a chance to say that you want to make sure you said today? Um, I think the most important part that everyone should realize worldwide, all leadership, uh, every single person, is that digital transformation, like when we say that buzzword, it isn't easy, right? Digital transformation is not easy. It's a constant process. Um, but, you know, if you have the right people involved, um, you can make some pretty awesome things happen, right? So uh, I think that's maybe my, my last thing I would like to say is uh, you have to have the right people involved, right? Uh, technology is the enable, people are still the, the key, right? That That's yeah. what my, my saying is. <laughs> Love that. That's awesome. Well, this has been so great. Thank you so much. I love the energy and excitement you're bringing to this, and I can't wait to see what you do. Awesome. Thank you so much for this. This was fun. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks to those of you who are listening. Subscribe, leave a review. We'll see you next time.